Hi everyone, today's video is going to be on isomers and I've taken this from a chemistry paper from June 2013. I'm just going to dive straight in. So, as always, make sure you read the question fully. The table shows the structures of six organic compounds A to F. Part A, the letter of the compound in the table that is not shown as a displayed formula is. Well, remember that a displayed formula is one which shows all the bonds present in a compound. So you're looking for the one where they basically haven't done that. And as you look, you can see straight away that it's compound C that is not drawn as a displayed formula because basically they've summarised the CH3 bonds rather than actually drawing them out. Part B, state what is meant by the term hydrocarbon and give the letter one compound in the table that it is not a hydrocarbon. With all these questions, they're going to ask you loads and loads of definitions, so it's really worth learning these off by heart because they... they become really easy marks to pick up if you've learned them, and if you haven't, then it makes the questions obviously incredibly difficult. But hydrocarbon is a compound which contains hydrogen and carbon atoms only. You must make, write the word only in order to make sure you get all the marks because they're very fussy. Which compound isn't a hydrocarbon? Well, we can see it's compound A because it has a bromine that's snuck in, and therefore, by definition, it can't be a hydrocarbon. Okay, what is meant by the term unsaturated and give the letter of one compound in the table that is unsaturated? So again, make sure you've learned the definitions of saturated and unsaturated. Saturated is when all the carbon and hydrogen bonds are single. Um, well, sorry, that's a ridiculous comment. It's when all the carbon bonds are single, whereas unsaturated means that you have a double carbon bond. So for this definition, you need to write that unsaturated means it contains a double carbon bond. And you're looking, and that's going to be compound B, which is ethene. But don't worry about calling it ethene, just write B. State what is meant by the term isomers and give the letters of two compounds in the table that are isomers of each other. Right, an isomer is something which has the same molecular formula but different structural formula. That means, remember molecular formulas when you write something like C2H4, it's literally just a summary of the number of atoms of each element present in a compound, whereas the structural formula is when you actually draw it out. So you're looking for two compounds which are the same in terms of their molecular formula but have different structural formula. The best way to do this, I think, is to write the molecular formula of each of the compounds. It won't take long and it will make the answer just pop out at you. So the molecular formula for compound A is CH3Br, for B is C2H4, for C is C5H12, for D is C2H6, for E is c 3 H8 and for F is C5H12. So which two are the same? Well, it's automatically popped out. It's C and F. Okay, next question, part C. Some of the compounds in the table are members of the same homologous series. One feature of a homologous series is that adjacent members have formulae that differ by CH2. State two other features of members of the same homologous series. I wouldn't faff too much about this. This is, again, something you just need to learn. So your first feature is that Members of the same homologous series show the same chemical behaviour. And for the second mark, you need to say that they show a trend in physical behaviour. And all that really means is that next door members of the same homologous series will have slightly different melting and boiling points. Okay, next up. Give the, two let give the letters of two adjacent members of the same homologous series shown in the table. So they need to belong to the same family, but just differ by one carbon atom. And you can see that that's going to be D and E because they differ by one carbon atom. D is ethane, E is propane. You don't need to write that, just make sure you pull out D and E. Okay, we're nearly there. Part D. Compound G has the molecular formula of C2H4Br2. It can be made from a compound in the table by reaction that does not need UV light. Draw the displayed formula of compound G. Okay. This tells us straight away that it is an addition reaction, the clue being that it does not need UV light. An addition reaction is what happens to alkenes when they react with bromine water, and what happens is the Br adds itself to the, bro to the alkene. So the display form of compound G, you just need to draw those bonds exactly as it looks, the C2H4Br2, and I'll draw that a little later, but I need to go on to the next question because I still haven't worked out how to use this app properly. And if I start writing now, I won't be able to scroll back up, because I'm stupid. Part 2. Compound H reacts with bromine to form one of the compounds in the table. The reaction needs UV light. Draw the displayed formula of compound H. Straight away, we know that we are looking for the compound in the table that has Br in it, which is compound A. Because it requires UV light, we know that this is a substitution reaction, and what will have happened 
is that one of the BRs in the BR2 bromine water will have added itself. So we know that the initial starting compound was actually methane, so this is what you need to draw as your answer for this. And that makes sense because when that reacts with bromine water, what you get is CH3Br, which was compound A. And I'm just going to go back up. Obviously, I've made a horrible mark here and draw the displayed formula of compound G because I promised that I would and I need to be better with technology. But it would be like this. I'm sorry that that's really horribly done. But probably the best thing for you to do is to pause the video and go back to when I was discussing this question and then you can see why I've drawn it like that. Anyway, I hope you found this video helpful. Obviously, remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and add any comments or questions below. And remember to like my Facebook page and I'll see you next time. Bye.